Hey guys, Mike here at Royal Clips Productions. Today is the 23rd of January 2017 and welcome to video, video 2 of my beginner series in which we're going to be talking about what computer you might need or you're going to need to start composing, producing and mixing your music. Um, the first thing that I'd kind of be focusing on or thinking about is where do you actually, where would you like to work? You know, some people have got, like myself, I've got a room that I go to. I don't move from that room. If I have to record anybody else, I'll go to a studio or we'll do a remote session, which is more and more popular these days where you'll send the MIDI or the sheet music and the, the musician will record their part and send it back to you and kind of try to mix it slightly to the guide track that you've done. But that's something completely different. So where do you want to work? You know, do you travel? Um, do you, if you're going to kind of record other, other musicians, do you need the ability to move around? You know, can you record at your, at your, your house or your studio, your garage or wherever you are? Um, you know, do you need a desktop solution or do you need a laptop solution? Now, I, what I would say is that over the last probably kind of five years, things have changed a lot. Um, you can do a lot of this stuff now on a laptop. You couldn't before. You would needed some sort of, um, you needed like a high-end workstation um, to work to. And a lot of people were kind of situated in one place and then used laptops to record certain parts. Um, but ultimately, everything went back into their main um, uh, workstation computer to be mixed, mastered and continued in the composition. So where do you want to work? Where's your creative space? Is a desktop better for you? Is a laptop better for you? <clears throat> um, you're going to need to obviously think about your budget. Now, the first thing I'd say right off the bat here is whether you're going Mac or PC, don't buy cheap. <laughs> um, there's no point in spending £350 or £400, you know, to be honest, even £600 um, on a computer when you're thinking about music production. Um, you won't get the life out of it moving forward, meaning you're going to have to perhaps buy another computer a year down the line. Um, it's just a waste of money and a waste of time. Um, I'd be kind of aiming at the a minimum of kind of <laughs> almost eight fifty a thousand pounds if I'm honest. Um, and um, you'll find a lot of the higher end uh, Windows solutions are up there in price now. Not quite as expensive as Apple, but they're they're getting quite expensive. Um, another thing I point out straight away is this whole Mac PC argument. Um, Five years ago, I would have told you to buy a Mac. Um, nowadays, I think that whether you're buying Mac or you're buying PC, in terms of the performance you get on both systems, I don't, I don't believe there's there's kind of much in it anymore. Um, essentially, the argument for me used to always be surrounding drivers. Um, Windows use ACO drivers, which is a Steinberg te technology. Um, Apple have got kind of a, a built-in um, driver called Core Audio. So if I search for Audio MIDI here. These are kind of built into the system. There's no additional drivers that I need. That's, again, that's kind of changing. Native Instruments have got some drivers that you need for their hardware to work. My Korg Nano Control, um, that needed some drivers from Korg. So, you know, things are changing slightly, but this kind of um, ultimately does control everything that you do, especially, you know, you can see the Korg Nano Control here. You can see my, my workstation. So that's controlling the MIDI side, and then this part is all about the audio interface, which we're going to talk about in a much later video. So yeah, if you're worried about, well, I need to buy a, um, a Mac because everybody said that, um, I wouldn't be so worried about it. The ASIO drivers now are great um, and a lot there's a lot of options on Windows as well. Um, personally, I use a Mac. My kind of workflow, um, because I've been using Macs probably since about 20, 2009, 2010, um, a lot of the plugins that I've bought and the workflows I've created fit into the Mac um, as well. I do use Logic, which is a Mac only uh, digital audio workstation, which again, I'm gonna talk about in, in a later video, but you perhaps might wanna wait for that video or check out another video on YouTube about Logic, because if you wanna use Logic, you're gonna need a Mac. Anyway, we're gonna get back into it. So you need to kind of consider the processor you're gonna need. Um, you're gonna need to decide how much RAM you need, how much memory the computer's actually got. Storage, which is different to memory. You know, memory is more about, um, uh, resources the computer can take from hard drives and from um, from software programs and use quickly. So you might load a, a sample in from a sample library, you might load a piece of audio into the RAM which the computer can get quicker than a hard drive potentially. Storage is more about um, your actual, your recordings, your, your project files, your operating systems, things like that, and obviously Mac PC. So I've tried to break this down into three kind of sections. So here we've got our kind of minimum specs, what I'd say you need as a, you know, do not do this basically, don't go any less than this. So if you're kind of recording instruments, you know, you're not really going to be using, you know, you're, you're a guitarist or a bassist or a drummer, you know, uh, or you're in a band and you want to mix your own, record and remix your own band's music. So you're not really going to be using much in the way of sample libraries. Um, and you're going to be working maybe 15 to 20, maybe 25 tracks, you know, let's put that up to 25 tracks. Um, 
perhaps you've got some outboard stuff you're going to be looking at, um, some light plugins. Again, guys, if these concepts aren't making sense to you, don't worry about it. We're going to be moving forward in the next videos and explaining all these concepts. So you're looking at going to be, you're going to need a dual core processor um, from Intel. Um, I wouldn't bother with AMD personally. There was a time when AMD were doing well, but now it is all about Intel. So you're going to need an i5 minimum running at 2.2 gigahertz. So what that basically means is just that when you're, if you're exporting a track, once you're all bouncing um, a track, as the correct term would be, um, or you're you're recording something, your processor gets involved to kind of, you're going to get a lower latency from when you're playing a guitar, say, um, and that's coming into the computer. There are other factors that hit that as well, such as your audio interface. We're going to talk about that in another video. So basically, the kind of the, the, the quicker your, your processor is, um, the better that your system is going to deal with what you're recording. So, um, yeah, just go into OBS to check it out. I haven't completely, yeah, it's fine. So, yeah, you're going to need um, a minimum of, of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a dual core 2.2 processor, a minimum of 8 gigabytes of RAM. This is to do with how many plugins you could put on a channel. So, things like uh, equalization and compression. <laughs> Again, if these are terms that are not that are new to you, we'll explain them. But the more plugins you're going to basically put onto your track to affect the way that that particular track sounds. Um, if you've got only four gigabytes of memory, by the time you've launched your, your software that you're going to be using to record and mix your music, and you've put a couple of plugins in, the computer's going to be kind of struggling um, with any more. It's not going to be able to put any more um, effects onto your, onto your track. Hard drive. So I talk here about um, SSD versus HDD. So SSD stands for solid state drive. HDD stands for a hard drive. The difference between the two, essentially, if you, if you think of... Um, like a record on a record player. If you wanted to go to track five, you've got to get the needle and line it up to the track and, and hit, the, hit it down to play that particular track. So it's a manual process that you've got to go and find the data or in our, in our example, that you know, the music in the, in the vinyl. Old hard drives, HDDs, do that. So it's optics, there's, a, there's, a, there's something that moves around this, this spinning disc to find data. So it's slower because as your disc becomes fuller, um, you know, it's going to take more time to find those bits of information. SSDs or solid state drives, there are no moving parts. So you save a file or you record a file, you know, the computer indexes where that file is and then can just open it, at, you know, a whim. So it's kind of 10, if not 15 times faster than a HDD. Me personally, it's don't, I wouldn't, but even if I wasn't doing music, I would not buy a computer without, without a solid state hard drive in it. Just, just, you need it nowadays. Um, so SSDs you're gonna you're gonna definitely need. Um, there is some talks with HDDs around. Um, obviously, you guys might have heard of the term defragmentation, which is, was a more of a thing that was current on Windows. Um, Apple kind of the way that their that their hard drives are, are formatted, <laughs> they use a journaling. It's, it's a journaled type of um, of writing to the disk. So the idea behind that is is it it kind of learns what you use the most, um, and. Uh, journals it and it puts it onto the disk in a logical way that the operating system can find and read. So you could say that HDDs maybe work a little better on Mac, but then again, Windows Windows 10 now, you know, it is optimized a lot better. So maybe not. <laughs> but again, that's perhaps an older argument. There is another type of, uh, of, of drive I'm going to write in here, which is called a fusion drive. Now, what a fusion drive is, is if you're on a budget and you can't perhaps afford you know, say you wanted a, a larger amount of storage. I've put 256 gigabytes here. You may want 512 or a gigabyte. But say you can't afford to, to, to spec up your computer to include a one terabyte solid state drive, which can be very expensive. There is an option known as a fusion drive. So what a fusion drive is, is it's a combination of a HDD and an SSD. So what it tries to do, especially from the Mac point of view, is it puts the operating system... Um, so OS X, which is what you'll be actually, you know, your your actual um, OS for the for the Mac, will be put onto the Fusion Drive. You know, Logic or Cubase or Pro Tools will be put onto that side of the drive. So you might only have 120. You know, if we've got um, one terabyte, which is 1,024 gigabytes, you might have 128 gigabytes of solid state, with the remaining being HDD. So it tries to give you that solid state performance while allowing you to have more space and keep the cost down. So yeah, you're definitely going to need. I'd just forget HDD. Let's take it out of the of the equation. Really, I really do think that you need a solid state stroke fusion, <laughs> um, unless you really don't care about speed and 
you're just doing very basic, maybe dialogue edits, you could get away with it, but the computer will be slower. So these are your minimum specs, you know, your optimum specs is going to get more expensive. Now we're talking about using a lot more MIDI tracks, using sample libraries, a moderate template, say for film scoring, you're kind of up there 30 to 60, 65 MIDI tracks, you know, um, recording some instruments, you're mixing your music, you're mastering your music. Now you're going to need still an Intel processor, but I'd say an i7 running at 2.6 gigahertz minimum with 16 gigabytes of RAM. I didn't talk about this either. There's different RAM speeds, so how quick the computer can access this data. Minimum, you're going to need 1600. 1866 is kind of your optimum. Um, so, yeah, at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. This is this is going to be heavy sample use, <laughs> um, you know, and about 30 to 60 tracks. Then your high-end computer, <clears throat> you know, we're talking about um, large templates, you know, heavy sample library use, lots of automation. Uh, recording instruments, you're mixing, you're dubbing your sessions to go to film, you're you're mastering your sessions, you're like 100, and, you know, 100, 200 tracks. Um, now we're going to be it's still an Intel processor, but we go into a Xeon E5, where you're going to be basically using eight cores at 3.0 minimum, 64 gigs of RAM. Again, the speed is is stepped up to, to 2133. And I reckon you need at least a 1TB uh, solid state hard drive. So that's going to be an expensive computer. So... I hope that's making sense so far. What we're going to do is go on the web and have a look at some of these systems. So we're going to start off looking at um, Apple's website, where I've basically brought up the new MacBook Pros. So we've got the 13-inch MacBook Pro and the 15-inch MacBook Pro. What Apple's site does really well is you can do these comparisons. So you can put the computers basically next to one another and look at what they can give you. So, you know... Me personally, I wouldn't be able to work on a 13.3 inch screen. I'd be pushed to a 15.4 inch screen straight away. Um, and, you know, for me, I would I would need 16 gigs of RAM minimum. Um, and I'd be running um, an i7 um, in this computer. Well, they all come with an i7 processor. But this is it is meeting your, your kind of um, your minimum spec without question. So, you know, we've got a 2.9 gigahertz. Uh, system by a, a custom build um, running dual core i5 you can customize it to an i7 which will cost you more money um, what this talks about here when this talks about turbo boosting and you'll see this on windows um, and mac uh, computers what that essentially means is that if you're pushing the computer to 2.9 say in this in this example uh, gigahertz and it's starting to kind of almost oh i'm running out of resources it will overclock itself on the fly to compensate um for the extra usage so it's going to use more battery it's going to use more power but you know it can go all the way up to 3.6 in this case which is fast all i would say about this is that you don't want to be in that realm all the time i, I think you know try and buy a computer try and get a computer that's going to kind of you know if you're on them if you're in if you're um, in this example here kind of the optimum specs and you're kind of uh where i've said you need at least a 2.6 um these processes while they're on 2.9 if you're going to start pushing it you don't want the computer to be overclocking itself all the time because it's kind of it's pushing it beyond what it's designed to do. You want to get a computer that's got, that's sitting, you know, your day to day tasks don't kind of exhaust the computer. It's not running or sprinting constantly. So turbo boosting can help you out. You know, you, you probably could get away with doing this on like a MacBook Air to a point, but you may kill the Mac because you're just pushing it all the time and overclocking its processor. So, yeah, um, memory, it comes with eight gig. You know, it's customizable up to one TB. But if you look at, if we go to buy now and we actually go in to look at this system, you'll see the customizations are quite heavy. So if we go to this one here, say, we're going to select this computer and we're going to say, right. So out of the box is a 2.9 dual core i5. We've got eight gigs of really fast memory because this is, these are the, the brand, these are the latest and greatest from Apple, if you like. You could push push this up to an i7 if you you know like I said where you work in what's your environment it may be you want a 13 inch computer so you can push this it's gonna it's gonna be really fast you can go up to 16 gigs of RAM but obviously if we if we choose that and we choose that this price is now jumping up to 2,199 you know but that may be that may be perfect for your needs you want a smaller computer that's lightweight that's incredibly powerful but out of the box you know you're looking at 1,749. If we come back out and we start looking at the MacBook Pro 13, uh, 15 inch even, which again is starting at kind of 2,349 pounds, straight away you're getting an i7 processor um, and it's quad core. So we've gone from dual core to quad core. 
straight away you're getting 16 gigs of memory as opposed to eight. Your hard drive is up to two terabytes and obviously you've got the much bigger screen. Again, if we go buy now on this computer, we're gonna start seeing how we could customize this machine. So if we're gonna choose this one here, so you could take it to a 2.9 i7 if you wanted that extra power and you know, you can go to a one terabyte, but it's gonna start getting expensive, you know, 360 pounds on top of your 2,699. Graphics cards, I wouldn't worry too much about. Um, that's something I probably should have mentioned before. You know, really the built-in graphics cards, I think are fine. Um, when it comes to the, I mean, these especially as well, you can actually run a whole bunch of, of um, screens off of them because they've got the built-in USB-C ports. So, you know, we you can run two displays, you know, no problem, which I think, again, is something if you're looking at a desktop solution, you need at least two displays. Anyway, I'm going off points like there. So those are the new ones, really. You're looking at kind of 1749 or 2349. You know, the kind of 13 inch would definitely fit into this category. You could spec the 13 inch up, which would kind of then put you into this category because you could start getting i7s in there. You can start adding the 16 gigs of RAM. So the 13 inch MacBook Pro can kind of do both where the 15 inch MacBook Pro in the new range that's come out this year and in, in, well, ended last year in 2016 um, goes straight into this range because you're getting an i7 from out of the box. You're getting your 16 gigs of, of, of it's even faster than 1866 and it kind of comes, um, you've got the option for the, the 512. When we then come to look at um, the Windows options, so I'm going to drag over Chrome. So I've kind of, I've had a look around eBuyer. eBuyer is a great site if you're looking to buy a computer. Um, there's so many uh, different options on there, especially for Windows. I, I love it. I buy a lot of stuff on there and I have done in the past. Asus, um, Livono um, and Fujitsu um, seem to be the three or, uh, different makes that I found to be the best. So... If we're looking at this uh, this book from Asus, really nice design. That's one thing that I, that I like from Asus. They've always built very nice designed uh, computers. I really like the finish on this. Um, uh, Livono don't look so great, but the specs are very good. Um, so straight away, we got an i5. <laughs> Um, we got eight gigabytes of RAM. We got a two five six um, gigabyte hard drive, thirteen point three inch um, screen, and you're coming in at eight three nine. So if we go down and look at the specifications of this, you've got your Turbo Boost technology again. So you you can go up to two point eight from your two point three that is running that standard, sixteen megahertz running uh, RAM running at eight gigs of RAM there, and your two five six. So straight away, you know you're in this category, no problem. If we look at, say, um, let's look at a different one here. So if we go Fujitsu here. So again, 13.3, little more expensive here, guys. And we're jumping up to almost 1,200 pounds. What this has got um, is we've got the Intel Core um, i5, 2.3, going up to 2.8, 8 gigabytes of much quicker RAM. So 2133, which is almost pushing us into the, well, it is pushing us into the top end. Um, and you could even take that to 32 if you want. And again, um, a 256. So that's perhaps, you know, it's designed a little a little quicker, um, quicker on the processor um, and your, your memory is a lot faster. So if you were using samples or you wanted to do a, have a lot of plugins, then maybe this option would be would be good for you from Fujitsu. Again, it looks nice. It's nice designed. Um, Asus are probably, again, my, my favorite. This is pushing us now into the we'd be kind of going into um, this middle category now uh, with the optimum specs um, again, 1299. We have now got, an, um, and they look great, by the way. I really think the, des the design for me is a thing. I don't want to use something that just looks horrible. So, you know, quite similar to the, the MacBooks, which, of course, I like. So um, we've got an i7 now. So if we go down here, this is um, <coughs> running the 2.6, turbo boost into 3.5. It's quad core. Um, and you've got then 8 gigabytes. Again, very, very quick RAM. Um, that may... Again, if we're looking at in the, in the optimum, you'd want 16, really. So I don't know if there's an option to customize that up. There may well be from the Asus site. Um, and this you can probably change as well. But the processor there is kind of spot on. Then we're going to look at Livono again, 800 pounds. So this is a 15.6. Doesn't look as nice, in my opinion, as the um, the, the Asus designs. Um, but you get, again, you're getting an i7. So we go into 3.1. Um, you've got... Um, 8 gig, could be 16, you've got to try and change it. Try and look around there, guys. If you're definitely looking for an i7 processor, I'd be looking for 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, just check around the, the eBuyer site. There's normally, you know, if you're going computers and then say you go all laptops, for instance, you can normally say, you know, I want 16 gigabytes of RAM here. 
um, and choose your processor as well. And it will, you know, search the website and add the laptops um, accordingly. Some of them get quite expensive. Um, <laughs> honestly, if it was me, um, some of these, when you're looking at this much money, I'd just buy a Mac. I, I, I really would. Um, but that is me. I am slightly biased. I enjoy the, I enjoy the, um, I enjoy OS X. I use it a lot. But if we look at this one, Dell 1790, <clears throat> what have we got here? Get down to our specs. So we've got Intel i7, we've got Turbo Boost in 3.5, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 SSD. So yeah, this is putting you into this category without question. Your optimum specs at about 1790. Um, and again, the machine, yeah, it looks quite nice. It looks quite nice. It's got that same simplistic design that I like. Now we're going to go back and look at the top end ranges. So your high end ranges. So now we're kind of talking about, you know, heavy templates, you know, 100 plus tracks huge sample libraries and things like that you know, massive mainly film scoring um and that sort of thing so the processor types now have kind of moved to um xeon e5 so if i go to this is the mac pro um the xeon e5s are kind of they're designed to almost um whereas the i7s are kind of sprinters the e5s are great at sustained long periods of use um they can handle heavy loads basically they're, they're it's, you know it's a stamina processor so Apple are designing this, you know, this system here, these get expensive, guys. So £3,899 is getting you a 3.56 core processor. Um, you can go to 12 core, but it starts getting crazy in price. 16 gig, no, we need at least 32 when we're talking about a high end. Again, you know, I don't think the graphics card is so important, but, you know, you can connect here five, uh, three, sorry, um, 5K displays and six Thunderbolt displays. So... You know, if you wanted three 5K displays, um, you could go for it, or you could do six Thunderbolt displays, which are kind of running at, at 2K. Um, and again, 256, not, not not really good enough. So if we were to actually customize this up to what I would buy, you know, if I was to go and buy my next computer, I'd be selecting this one. And I'd be going to an eight core. I'd need at least 32, well, at least 32. If anything, I'd go 64. Storage, I want one terabyte. So now we're up at, you know, almost £7,000, which is very, very expensive. If you know someone who's computer savvy, um, you can install your own memory. So if you bought the 16 gig, you can buy memory a lot cheaper. You know, you can probably pick this 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 up for about £400 as opposed to 1000 You just got to make sure that it all matches up. And this ECC, where Apple talk about ECC, what that means is that if, if there's any corruption in the memory that the computer's found, it, it kind of fixes it instantly. You know, when, we, when we're talking about these large um, workstation type sessions, you don't need anything going wrong. So it's like, it's, it's just, it's, it, you know, it's inexcusable for your memory to basically be be um, storing data wrong. So ECC kind of looks at how it's how it's um, how it's storing its its data, finds any corruptions or anything that needs to be deleted or removed or purged, and gets rid of it. Um, so yeah, th they start getting expensive. Um, you know, especially from the the Apple viewpoint. And when when we actually look at the memory here, running at eighteen sixty six, I'm not very happy with that. I'd rather that be up at the. You know, we want this this um, two one three three. You know, um, this is supposed to be, 2017 supposed to be a year for Apple desktops. I don't know whether they're going to um, change the iMacs. Obviously, we've got the 21 and a half inch iMac and the 27. Um, the 21 and a half kind of goes into your beginner's range. The 27 kind of sits or it can sit kind of in the middle of these two. You probably can do the high end stuff, but you'd want you'd want um, you'd want uh, Xeons really and you'd need 64. The IMAX really 27 inch they don't really go much higher than 32 gigabytes um yeah up to 32 gig um so yeah I, I I'd be kind of but if you look at that sorry so if we go back to that if we look at the the kind of speeds you can get um in terms of the memory on the IMAX is he going to tell me here no we probably need to go by let's have a look so we're going to go for let's go top end on the 27 inch IMAX looking at the speeds Again, 1867, it is, is a little behind. If you look at the Mac Pros, the MacBook Pro, sorry, you know, that they are running at that, up to that um, uh, 
2133 so i'm waiting for this to change personally i wouldn't buy this right now because i'm waiting to see what apple are going to do um with this with their desktops what i'm hoping for is one of these let's just go back a 27 inch imac like an imac pro um which contains xeon so you know if you could get an imac um, that has, say, eight core Xeons in it and up to 64 gigs of RAM. Wow, that's just, you know, all of a sudden you've saved loads of space. You haven't got all these things sitting around the place. It makes a lot of sense. Going back to PC, if we bring this across here, what I've tried to do is I've tried to go onto two websites that, I, that I, I'm familiar with. So one of them is PC Specialist and one of them here, we've got uh, Scan Computers, which kind of you can almost custom build um, Windows PCs to your specification that you're looking for. So... At the moment, I've kind of pre-built um, a Xeon E5 system, 8-core, running at 2.1. Mm, I'd probably want that maybe a little higher. Um, 2.1 is okay because, like I said, it, it spreads the load across those cores. The software will use a technology called multi-threading, which basically kind of calls on each one of your different processes to perform a different task, thus, again, spreading the load. Like I said, these E5s are, are stamina um, uh, uh, processes. But you could even go for a 10-core, say. 10 core running at 2.2, you know, we've got 64 gigs running at our super fast three, um, 2133 megahertz. Graphics, again, I'm not too bothered with as long as I personally, I use three screens, that I'd be able to connect three screens to, I'm not worried about it at all. Hard drive configurations, now when you're really in your top end, you're probably going to need at least four hard drives, and that's something I haven't really spoken about yet, you know. This makes it nice and easy for you because you can put your first hard drive, your second hard drive, your third and fourth, you can customize it up. You probably your archive drive, the one that you save your projects to, you'd probably be fine just putting that as a as a standard uh, set of hard drive, say like a, what we got here? Um, say you've got like a two terabyte HDD, that's just to store your, your kind of finished projects on your archive projects on. But again, if you wanna go for it, why not go in and get yourself a, you know, say a 1TB, let's add that. It will start obviously putting the price up here. It's starting to jump up. Oh, you can't see it because I'm in the way. So if I just move myself slightly there. So yeah, as you start adding your different hard drives, um, things are going to start getting more and more expensive. This is PCI storage as well, which is hugely fast. Um, same as the Mac Pro. It, it's basically on the on the motherboard um as a as a as a, its own card so if we look at these that you know this is reading and writing at a ridiculous rate these are reading and writing at half the speed but it's still fast enough to move forward so you can you can build essentially a system that's quite similar or very similar to the mac pro for almost half the price um, which is where a lot of people are starting to move from Apple to Windows um, in the pro. Hans Zimmers, if, if you're interested in film scoring, remote control productions, pretty much all the guys there are using uh, Windows computers and the touch surfaces are all Windows based, they're all Windows coded. Their Pro Tool systems are all um, using Pro Tools, um, sorry, using um, uh, Mac Pros, and there's a whole Pro Tools rig. So there's a there's almost hybrid systems going on um, there. Uh, Junkie XL also uses Windows and he uses Cubase. So, you know, it's it's moving a little bit, I think, because of the cost. Um, personally, that's why I think that's happening. Me, myself, you know, I'm considering a, a Windows um, a option moving forward just because I can get a, basically the same spec for, for kind of half the money. There is an argument over I use Logic, you know, Apple creating the hardware and the software together. There is truth to that. Um, I've experienced it myself. Um, so, there, you know, I worked for Apple for two years and I have, uh, you know, they, that definitely is a thing. I'm not just saying that. Um, I found that now my Mac Pro is getting a little old. Um, Logic is working a lot better on it than a lot of the other DAWs, which is interesting. Anyway, so then we're going to go over to, and digress in there. Sorry, guys, I do ramble sometimes. So, yeah, um, now we're looking at uh, scan computers. I'm going to try and bring this over a little more. They've got kind of four customizations here that we've got for um, audio production. Um going all the way up to kind of two grand at the moment with uh, with Xeons. Again, you can configure them. So say we take um, say we take this one here and we configure the system. It then starts giving us options um, in terms of what we want. So I might want to change my CPU um, and I might actually want to go for uh, two times. So that means we can, you know, say you've got um, 10 cores, you might be able to have five cores on one and five cores on another. You've essentially got two processors with their individual cores on them um, changing the ram so you might want to go for a 12 core you can change everything that you want um, and it gives you a different price very similar to the apple website so you can go through and start building this and again i mean if i 
where are we now? So I've just changed the, what have I got in here? Let's go into here. So it's this, uh, yeah, 64 gig of uh, memory, 2133 on speed. That's good. And let's say I change this. Let's go for it. Let's say I want a 12 core system. 10 core, should we say? Yeah. Let's go for it. Let's go all the way up here. I want a 12 core, 3 gigahertz. This is like bad boy. So let's say I want one of them. You know, so that's already costing me an extra 1,500 pounds. If we actually add this to the basket now, add it to the basket. Change, change, change. Where's my final price? Yeah, four grand. So literally pretty much bang on 50% um, um, of, of the Apple solution. But technically, because the RAM's faster, way more cores, a better system. Um, and you kind of want to trust these guys as well. Like, the, you know, PC specialists, they give you warranties, excess systems, you know, um, from scan computers, very, very good. So... It really, there's so many different options out there. Um, it's really kind of, you've got to decide what, you, what you're what you gonna need. You know, I definitely would kind of, I'll put this up um, in the comments box below because I hope it will it will kind of help you guys out. So I hope that was useful guys. Um, apologies for rambling on too long. Um, I hope there's something in that video that you can, you can take um, and build upon. Any kind of comments or questions, just uh, give me a shout. And I try to answer them as best I can um, or kind of, you know, talk amongst yourselves nicely um, in the comment section. Let me know what computer are you using that's kind of um, that's working for you. Have you bought something in the past that didn't work for you and you wish you got something else? You know, um, let me know because I'm always interested to know what people are, are using and how it's working for them. OK, guys, um, I hope that was useful and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.